You can make your layouts look more professional simply by avoiding common mistakes made by amateur designers and adhering to solid fundamentals. In this video, we're going to look at examples of amateur graphic design, figure out how they can be improved and demonstrate multiple solutions to this brief that can still be achieved quickly and on a low budget. So where are we going to find amateur designs to critique? Well, I thought about the things that I see every day in shop windows, on notice boards, outside schools and community buildings, there are often posters for local events. Over on Google Images, I found some typical efforts for summer fates, fairs, family fun days. It's all basically the same thing here in the UK, an outdoor event with stalls and activities for families with children like this. Okay. This one is so bad. It would be a bit of a straw man argument on my part, or is it? so bad it's good i don't think that's what they were going for like an anti-design bad taste approach but i do have some sympathy with the person who put this together in my first design agency job we were designing a lot of posters and flyers for nightclub events and the promoters would just want to fill every space and add in more information and more offers and it was a little bit disheartening you know to deal with so i understand the scenario that you may be in designing this kind of poster and i also want to say thank you and sorry to anybody who's featured in this video and hopefully you understand this is just for the purposes of learning they are here to help amateur and junior designers get together and begin to have this art director's eye so this is what i want you to do throughout this video as we look at each of these examples look at it and really try and figure out what is actually wrong with it rather than just it looks bad so here we go let's look at something a little bit better so this is for Ludgers Hall summer fate now what's going on here what problems can you see what's wrong with this poster one thing that really sticks out to me is too many fonts I just had a count up and I think there are 14 different fonts visible on this poster now that's a lot I mean two would have been plenty 14 fonts I think every single item is in a different font. That's pretty mad and potentially a different color as well. So too many fonts is a primary thing that really sticks out. It's a dead giveaway for amateur designs. And I think there's also there's too many colors and there's a bunch of other inconsistency. But we'll see that as we go through some of the other posters. So let's look at something with fewer fonts. This has fewer fonts. Does that make it better? not sure the issue here is poor quality fonts this is quite a rudimentary drawing this main typeface that's being used and then at the bottom we've got this very generic looking contact information now mercifully they haven't used the font that's used for the primary the poster for the, like the email address and that because it might be a bit <laughs> difficult to read it but it's just not the right combination. That sort of serif is a bad choice for this sort of event. Doesn't communicate family fun day. But this alignment being all over the place, the really wide leading line height between family and fun day doesn't look like it makes it belong together. But poor quality fonts is what I want to focus on here. Okay, so if we don't use too many quant fonts and we don't use poor quality fonts, how does that work? Does that make it look better? Well, here, this looks like Arial Rounded, I think, which is not a font that I would choose, but you can say it's of a better quality. It's certainly more legible if you look at the bottom where we have the date and time and address and then the contact info at the very bottom. That is clear and that's very important. So thumbs up for that. But the main issue here is that of hierarchy. So this video is for amateur designers, junior designers, aspirational art directors. Hierarchy is about giving prominence to the most important things. So what do we see first here? What's our eye drawn to? Well, potentially this logo. I mean, it's far too big for the Association of Carers. I appreciate that they may be the people putting it together and the charity that is benefiting from this fun day that doesn't mean their logo needs to be massive that needs to be much much smaller only wants to take up maybe a, 
a, a quarter of the width of this poster, I would say, a third at most. And it's kind of thrown over to the right. It, there's again, there's just inconsistent alignment going on here, but we have that and then we have the title in, in black. So that does give it some prominence, but really the title of this event, what kind of event it is, needs to be clear, it needs to be able to be read in less than a second. So people going past see it and then they want to approach it. So they really need to mess with this hierarchy. In fact, just visually, we have at the top uh, this bunting, that'd be like one section and then next the logo with the title next to it. Then we have these six circles which occupy a large area, that'd be a third section. Then we have all this tie which becomes uh, its own little section at the bottom too. So there's like four sections and they each have a similar amount of visual weight and we're not giving uh, the right prominence to the most important things which is what hierarchy is all about. I mean these circles, like having a circle that big just for the word more in it is a, a real waste. Um, it seems just like get in touch to find out more. Every word is a different color. It's kind of like something a child would do, you know, in putting together this kind of post. Maybe a child did. Good on for them. I when I, you know, started doing graphic design at school, it was very poor. And I get that they're trying to make this fun, perhaps, because it's for children. But making every word a different color is just a way to annoy people and make it look very amateurish. It's, it's not as legible and it's you can introduce fun and levitate and appeal to the right target market in different ways and that's not the way to do it. So what about something which is approaching more professional? Now this design for this family fun day looks like it is based, in fact, I know because the next one we're going to look at looks like it's a very similar template. This is based on a template. You can kind of tell it's got that template look, something you just buy off the shelf, change the text of the date and time, and hey presto, you've got a poster. Now, the template itself, there are some elements that make it look more professional, okay? Somebody knows how to uh, bend the type, you know, put it on a different sort of path, um, and an arc, it's going on an arc on the circle, free family event. And we've got some gradients, we've got some illustrative elements, we've got this ribbon banner underneath the date, the way the photographs are arranged at different angles with this border. Uh, we've got different layers going on, we've got drop shadows. So there's some elements that are including professional design software. It doesn't just look some, like something that's done in uh, word processing software, like some of the other examples. So maybe here it looks a little bit more professional, these little elements and details, but there are some elements which take it away from that. So one is the inconsistent alignment. So in general, this is a poster which is ranged to the center. So all the way down from the URL at the top, things emanate from that central axis. But then we have some elements that break that. So where it says activities includes fun, fair entertainment, this is ranged to the left. And then next to it, in another column, we have win a prize every hour, which has been made into a waving flag. And that whole row breaks that central alignment. Then within it, we have some text which is ranged a different way. So that starts to break it and that starts to lose its professional sharpness. I think also the busyness of this poster, there's some redundancy like free family event, but then we have family in the title of the event. So we don't need the word family twice or welcome. Is that really necessary? Perhaps saying, cause you know, this is, um, benefiting Muslim charities. They just want people to know that you don't have to be Muslim to attend. Perhaps that's relevant. It, it seems redundant to me, but you know, in this context, it might be, they know that better than we do, but there's just unnecessary decorative elements. Like, do we need this bunting again at the bottom? And then this darker grass that's growing up around the photographs and the way the bunting and the balloons compete at the top, it just, is unnecessary busyness 
and it really spoils the overall visual impact of this poster. Now this next one, which is based on the same template, and this is the last amateur example we're going to look at before we look at how we'd maybe approach this brief, is similar. And you can see this time the alignment is consistent. It all comes from the center and that helps, except we've got this free entry star on the bottom right and you can kind of get away with like an element that's thrown in like that in general it's consistent i think there are some issues like even with that free entry they want to tighten up that leading a little bit so it pulls together but i think overall it's the visual weight again like we had a couple of posters back that is an issue so the logo at the top the hinge center is in black and it is very dominant so again this should be smaller so it doesn't compete with Summer Fair, the title of the event. It's like Summer, the tracking is very tight. Fair, it's wider. That's the space between each letter, each character. So things like that just make it look that little bit amateurish, even though it has these professional type elements like the depth on the ribbon and things like that. So it's just little elements like that will make it look more professional the unnecessary decoration again why have we just got bunting sat on the grass at the bottom in a smaller size that's those little triangle flags by the way if you don't call that bunting in your country and stuff like more info http colon slash slash so we don't need all that i could just start with go dot for that and or please call the center on oh was it? just put the phone number we don't need all that uh, phone number email so just uh, copy editing and working on the visual weight of these elements and some of those little little details would really just tighten the whole thing up okay so what would you do if you had this kind of brief you're not going to have a large budget you're not going to have uh, lots of resources you're going to have to produce something quickly how would you make this work and appeal to families for this kind of event? Well, I want to take this poster. Let's redesign this, the Ludgers Hall Summer Fair. What would your approach be for this kind of poster and how would we involve, uh, avoid these problems that we've talked about? Now, it's worth remembering that when you look at professional work, so t take something like, you know, a magazine. If you, if you grab a magazine that's got adverts in it, you know, for top companies, you know, this is for Rolex. Let's give a minute for this to come into focus. Let's see if there's some more here. Investment companies, technology companies, you know, banks, this kind of thing. You, you get the idea. It's, it's very simple, really. This one for Maserati cars. So it's not technical illustration skills or experimental layouts that are required to be professional doesn't mean you can't do those things but often and i've worked with you know some of these you know the world's most valuable companies you know big agencies and it's really getting these fundamentals right not making uh, you know silly mistakes like pixelated images and inconsistent colors but really these layout fundamentals that we've talked about making sure to get those right uh, allows the layout to have the right visual impact and that's the most important thing so I'd probably do something like this this should be the poster you've got a one dominant element a big black rectangle then you've got the medium element the title summer fate it's very clear it's very legible in black and if you don't know when and where then you're not welcome this is great because it gives it that exclusivity and it makes it aspirational so it's something people want to come to. Okay, this is a bad joke. I appreciate that this is maybe not the most appealing to young children. However, if you think this modernist style wouldn't work and you need to do something wacky, I don't agree. This vulgarity that people insist on for mass market communication it's just wrong. It's just, Vignelli talks about this, visual pollution. And we can still bring you know, elegance to everything we do. And actually, a modernist solution could work really well. It still has some fun, some levity. It looks like the event. This is an incredibly minimalistic illustration, but we've got a sunny day where you want to sit on the grass. 
and this title is clearly legible it's the thing that you see and the use of white space just is a luxury which just helps this event look like a worthwhile event you want an event even if it's an event that's open to all to feel like it's worth attending worth your time i know as like a dad of three i see these things and i think should i bring my children to this event so then you approach and you see the information you walk up closer to that shop to that notice board wherever it is and you take the time to find out when and where it is and if it's for you now with these colors i actually got a picture this through a little googling is the actual location of we'll just hold village recreation ground recreation field welcome to the rec doesn't look that appealing on this poster but i'm sure with the grass court on a lovely sunny day there's some some beautiful aspects i've never been to this place but if you notice the shield is here again on the top left of this sign which was on the center of our original poster and we have these colors the green and the yellow that are the village colors so i've adopted these colors here and by having these colors that work together in a similar tone this is another way of as well tying it to this village perhaps these posters would be around in neighboring towns and villages and it would just give that subtle little link back to the village's brand the colors from their shield the village crest so other things you could do with this sort of layout that'd be fun you don't have to be literal like the last version I showed you with the sun in a blue sky, you could do something uh, of this kind, which is, is not so literal in the illustration. So that's one kind of technique. This is just, this is just a quick example I put together. It didn't take very long uh, to do. So something you could do as a favor, something you could do for somebody, or if, if you're an amateur learning from these kind of principles, like if you're volunteering uh, with a community organization. You could also go with more of a photographic route. So I just grabbed some photographs from Unsplash, see what I could do with those. So this gives it more of a, a premium kind of feel. This would go well in the village that I live in. People uh, like a little bit of class, a little bit of style. And I think with this interesting typeface that we've chosen for the headline here, but just these little elements give it this little bit of professional detail. So we've chosen a quality but interesting typeface for the headline. Then a, a very uh, legible and workable typeface for all the information. All that information is grouped together in that unit. The title is grouped together, the location and what it is. And then we have an image which just suggests the target market whom we want to attend and it's children it's people bringing children along and families attending this event and it's within the context of where it is a park space i just grabbed this image from unsplash it'd be great to do a photo shoot if that would ever be possible for this kind of thing but just little details like having the information type in front of the photograph but then putting the the title of the event behind the head of the girl in this photograph just those little details and doing that with some care which i didn't especially do here <laughs> would really help something stand out as professional similar you could just do another version of this you know just demonstrate with this photograph of this boy here it's a little bit more fun so that girl it was more with an elegance to it here there's a smile, there's bright eyes, there's a silliness, and it evokes maybe a little bit more of the feel of the event. And depending on the community, and if you're designing a poster for somebody, you should know the feel that they want to produce. So depending on the community, depending on the target market, the location, it would be about choosing the right images that evoke that right sort of feel. But it just shows what you can do uh, quite quickly and how these things could come together. We've got to do some mock-ups, See how we look in in context, how we look out there. If we do fly posters with this kind of thing, let's see with the sun in the sky or the more graphical route, how that might work outdoors. Then similarly with a photo photographic route. I think this would be cool with maybe a triptych here. We've got two of the girl, but if we maybe have a third different image, I think that would be really nice. And you could maybe put them around the local area. So each time you saw a different photograph, and you would want to do things like just match up the grading so 
it look like similar lighting, similar time of day, and just finesse all those sorts of colors if you're doing something uh, professionally. But that's maybe a couple of approaches that I would take if I was volunteering and putting together something quickly, but I still want it to look professional. So here's the original at A, and with the same copy included, pretty much, we have these two other versions. So what do you think? You're going to put your preferred version A down in the comments, aren't you? Well, that's hilarious. Well, let us know uh, what you do think about these and this approach and maybe the way you would have taken it. We're developing more resources to help you master the fundamentals of design. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and check the links in the description of this video to stay in touch. If you're still here, you must have learned or appreciated something in this video, right? So let us know in the comments, which principle are you going to apply to your next layout? And until next time, happy designing.